Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to worship here at Peace Lutheran Church for Sunday, May 17th, the sixth Sunday of Easter. This week we uh, here at Peace, along with all of Wisconsin, uh, receive word that we can uh, begin opening up. And for the church, as we talk about reopening, we need to remember that in reality, the church was never closed. We were simply deployed. Now returning to home base is going to be sweet, indeed. But whether we are deployed or whether we are returning to home base, we are the church. It happened, the unthinkable the shift that showed our frailty. Nonetheless, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. We are separated, we are isolated, and in this world, we have trouble. Nonetheless, we take heart because Jesus has overcome the world. We are conflicted and frustrated, weary too, but nonetheless, those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. We are down but not out, sidelined but still in the game. We fight for our families, we hold on to love, we strive for kindness, but the hard times get harder. Nonetheless, we are more than conquerors through Him who loves us. We walk through adversity. We are sons and daughters of the Most High. We know to whom we belong and we know where our hope lies. For he is the first and the last, the Alpha and Omega, the one who is and the one who is to come. It looks bleak, they say it's grim, there's a lot to fear, but nonetheless, we are strong. We are courageous. We are the church.
Today in worship, our big focus will be on Jesus' promise to send the Helper, namely the Holy Spirit, who is also our Comforter, our Counselor, our Advocate, and Guide. My friends, as we uh, gather here for worship, wherever you may be, whatever you may be feeling, whether you've been feeling up lately or even down, Know that you are loved. You are loved by our God. And that Jesus has promised to be with you and send you the gift of his Holy Spirit. And so as we gather today for worship, again, wherever we may be, our prayer is, Holy Spirit, light divine, shine upon this heart of mine. Open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Selected verses from Psalm 66. Thank our God, you nations. Make the sound of his praise heard. He has kept us alive. And has not allowed us to fall. You have tested us, O God. You have refined us in the same way silver is refined. 
You have trapped us in a net. You have laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but then you brought us out and refreshed us. Come and listen, all who fear God. And I will tell you what he has done for me. With my mouth I cried out to him. High praise was on my tongue. If I had thought about doing anything sinful, the Lord would not have listened to me. But God has heard me. He has paid attention to my prayer. Thanks be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or taken away his mercy from me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteous sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts, regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that, if you are to be slandered, 
for those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that is should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but being made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits of, in prison. But they formerly did not obey. When God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through the water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of the dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I was wondering if you had ever thought much about having to say goodbye to someone. Sometimes when we say goodbye to a person, we don't feel so bad on the inside, especially if we know that we're going to see that person again, maybe real soon. However, sometimes saying goodbye to someone can be a really hard thing. I can think of people in my life that I wish I would have had a chance to say goodbye to. I think of people that I wish I could have told them goodbye before we were all having to separate from one another because of having to be in quarantine. And maybe you can think of people um, that it's been hard for you to say goodbye to. I want to remind you of a time in the Bible where Jesus had to say goodbye. He was talking to his disciples, and he told his disciples that he would, in John 14, verse 16, he says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. And that helper that Jesus is talking about is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to us as Christians, as God's children, to be our helper, to be our comforter. He's the one that is always with us. And that makes it easier sometimes for us when we have to say goodbye to one another because we know that we have the Holy Spirit to be among us, to keep us strong in our faith.
I'd like you to remember that if you do have to say goodbye to someone, that Jesus is with you. The Holy Spirit is your helper, and he will help you when those times come. I think it's something that we can praise God for, that we have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, you give us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He is our helper and our comforter when we face having to say goodbye. Thank you for being with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In a Peanuts comic strip from a while back, Linus is building castles in the sand. He tells Charlie Brown, working with your hands is good therapy. It takes your mind off your troubles. And whenever I feel depressed, I build sandcastles. And in the comic strip behind Linus are a dozen or so sandcastles. And Linus finishes by saying, I've been feeling pretty depressed lately. Have you ever felt like that? I know I have. Have you felt like that lately? I know I have. Even though the sun has been shining this last week here in Wisconsin, the weather is finally warming up, and things are beginning to open up, still, perhaps, you find yourself a little bit depressed a little bit down, or maybe a lot. I'm depressed about the way things are going in the world today, even if things are beginning to open up, at least here in Wisconsin. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus is preparing to leave his disciples. John chapter 14 is part of what's called Jesus' farewell discourse. In a sense, Jesus is saying goodbye to his disciples just before his crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. But is Jesus really leaving them? And is he leaving them to their own devices? Does Jesus say to them, Hey, it's been nice. You're on your own now. Time to fend for yourselves. No, not at all. For a number of years, Jesus has been patiently instructing his disciples in the way, his way, in the world. Jesus has allowed them to be first-hand witnesses to all of his wonderful signs. And now he says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. This helper will be the Holy Spirit, who in this pas passage, at least, is to be the same counselor, comforter, and guide that Jesus has been with his disciples. No, Jesus does not leave his disciples all alone. He does not expect them to find their way the best that they can. He tells them, that this companion, this helper, the Holy Spirit, dwells in, with you and will be in you. In other words, they will have the same intimate, personal connection with the helper that they have enjoyed with Jesus. And in the very next verse, we hear Jesus say, I will not leave you as orphans. In other words, our Lord and our Savior will not leave his disciples on their own. He will not leave them all alone in, shall we say, 
a quarantine all by themselves. Yes, my friends, there is a message here for you and for me, just as there was for the disciples. When Jesus calls us to follow him and trust him, he doesn't expect you or me to be some kind of spiritual superhero. He wants us to follow him, to love him and keep his commandments. Translation, he wants us to be dependent on him. Now that is a message that goes against much of what's been ingrained in us by our world and our culture throughout our lives. After all, why do students go off to college? Some might say, well, to get a good education, to get wisdom and skills. But as the parent of a college student myself, very often what they value is being out on their own. What do older people feel about getting older? What do they fear about those years? Maybe the loss of a spouse or even death. But I've also heard that they fear becoming dependent on their family. What is a reason often heard of why a young couple that really doesn't want to get married? Well, I've heard, well, we don't want to be dependent on one another. We like our freedom. And I'm sure that's one reason we are so excited to get out from under this quarantine here in our state. We're all tired of following all these mandates, all these restrictions what someone else is telling us to do. Unfortunately, many summer camps are not being held this year, but one year a child told his pastor that he was excited about going back to summer camp. And the pastor asked him, why do you like going to camp? And the child's reply, well, pastor, the thing about this camp is that you're free to do just about anything you want. Well, my friends, today's gospel reading depicts things a bit differently. It's a way that is characterized by following and by dependence. Jesus says that we are to keep his commandments. If we love him, then we are to follow him. And then immediately he says that he will give us a gift. He will give us his presence with us, next to us, and in us, so that we will be able to faithfully follow him. In light of this word from John's Gospel, you might think of the Christian life as a life of dependency. And my friends, that's really a good thing. Because so often we find ourselves feeling all alone. If we are not dependent people, then why does it hurt us so much when we feel all alone? Have you ever felt alone? At one time or another, all of us have felt that way. Even if we're in the physical presence of other people, we may still feel like we're alone. Because we may sense that no one really understands us, what we're feeling, what we're thinking. Or we may sense that no one really cares. There's a deep hunger in all of us to have someone in our lives who understands us, who cares for us, who's an intimate part of our lives, who will never leave us when things get down. We human beings are created by God in such a way that we cannot give ourselves the comfort that we need. We are created to be dependent. We need others whom we can trust and whom we can confide in. 
As human beings, we often need help from others whom we trust. But the problem is, is that sometimes others, in one way or another, either aren't there, refuse to be there, or if they are there, they end up leaving us or letting us down. Or at the very least, they may disappoint us or fail us. If we put our total trust in other people, whether they be government officials or our own family, and not in God, we are setting ourselves up for being empty and heartbroken. But in today's Gospel reading from John chapter 14, we have a tremendous promise from our Lord. He tells us that he will never leave us alone. During Jesus' earthly ministry, if there was a disease, he healed it. If someone was blind, the person received their sight. If there was darkness, he filled it with light. The disciples had Jesus in the flesh 24 hours a day. But Jesus knew that in order to fulfill God's will, he had to suffer and die and rise again and then return to his Father and that the Father would send them the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus told his followers, if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. The disciples' hearts must have sunk. Here they had the one who had given them hope and fullness in every area of their lives. And now he was going to leave them. But Jesus assured them, saying, I will not leave you as orphans. And to those who began to feel a little panic, he said later on, Peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. Jesus promised to send his followers, including you and me, a helper. The original word used here in John chapter 14 for the English word helper is the Greek word parakletos. And in English, it's changed to paraclete which means advocate, comforter, counselor, or even strengthener. The word finds its origins in a court of law. In the Greek legal system, people were allowed to take a paraclete with them to court. Now, the paraclete didn't plead their cases like lawyers do for us today. Instead, the paraclete stood beside them to influence the court by their support for the accused and as witnesses to their value as citizens. In fact, the word literally means called to one's side. So in this sense, the paraclete was an advocate for another person in their time of difficulty. He was their comforter, their strengthener. And my friends, this gives us insight into what God provides for us in the Holy Spirit. Not only one who comforts us, but one who is at our side, advocating for us in times of need, witnessing to our value as citizens of God's kingdom, and strengthens us for our journey until our Lord comes again. In fact, he strengthens us to be, shall we say, dependent on our Lord. And it's through this helper, this paraclete, the Holy Spirit, that Jesus gives to us much more than just a promise to watch over us. No, he promises to be with us and in us. He assures us of the most intimate, loving relationship that we could ever experience. 
a relationship that he himself established and made firm through his death on the cross and his rising from the tomb. And we as Christians continue in that relationship with our Lord by keeping his commandments. But keeping our Lord's commandments means much more than just following a, a list of do's and don'ts. Keeping our Lord's commands means clinging to and treasuring all the goodness that God gives to us. Just before his death on the cross, Jesus, in effect, said to his disciples, and to you and me as well, if you love me, cling to the things that I have graciously given to you and entrusted to you, so that you may truly be forgiven, that you may be freed from your guilt and your despair, that you may depend on me rather than yourselves, that you may cling to my work instead of your own works, that you draw courage and comfort from the promises given to you in your baptism. Jesus says, if you love me, you will eagerly receive these gifts from me. You will let me wash you and feed you and cleanse you and heal you. For this is my will for you and your life, that you walk in the safety and the shelter of my death and my resurrection. One day, a friend of C.S. Lewis, the great Christian author, commented that some of the atheists he knew were some of the very, very best people he had ever met. C.S. Lewis was really unimpressed by his friend's observation of the goodness of these unbelievers. He said, no wonder atheists are good people. They have to be good. They have to get everything right. They don't believe in a God who forgives. They don't believe in a God that you can depend on. And that's true. Christians are those who are free, free to go forth, to confess our sins and our imperfections and our wrongdoing, to praise God more than we praise ourselves. We are free to forgive those who have wronged us, even our enemies. And we are free to love them as he has loved us. We are free to do all of these things, even though we may fail at times or even fail many times, because we trust in the God who loves us so much that he forgives us. My friends, the Christian life is not based upon our need or even our possibility of getting it all right. The Christian life is based upon the forgiving, receiving, emboldening, and encouraging love of God in Jesus. The Christian life is dependent on the one who gives and the one who forgives. If living the Christian life of confessing and praising and forgiving and loving seems like a very tall or even impossible task, then my friends, take heart. Jesus will not leave you alone to try to do it on your own. He loves you. He sends you the Holy Spirit, your advocate, the one who is called alongside of you to enable you and strengthen you to be his dependent. Something that is far better than Linus's sandcastles. And so we praise God for his never failing love. Love divine, all loves excelling.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Jesus Christ to those who do not know him, that through hearing the word of the Lord, many may be brought to faith and to the knowledge of the truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church of God here and everywhere, that all who confess Jesus Christ may be united in teaching and witness, defended against all the assaults of the enemy, and eager to gather around your word and sacrament in love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our congregation, for the work of the kingdom in our community, and for the resources to accomplish all that God desires, that his name may be glorified among us and his purpose fulfilled in our words and our works. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our nation and those who lead our nation, for the end of the pandemic, for peace among nations, and for an end to terror and violence, that we may work for the common good so that justice may, be, may prevail, life be protected, and truth abound. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the agencies and institutions through which we love our neighbor and provide for those in need, for the destitute and homeless, and for everyone who suffers unemployment and underemployment, that we may aid them in their needs and assist them to find honorable labor to supply all their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the lonely who suffer the burdens of life without friendship or family, for those depressed or weary of pandemic measures, and for the fellowship of the church, that we may bear one another's burdens and live in community with Christ as our head. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and those who suffer, and for those who are facing any kind of trouble or trial, including all those whom we've been asked to remember in our prayers here at peace, and those whom we now lift to our Lord in our hearts. That God would grant healing to their bodies, peace for their minds, and consolation in their grief and sorrows. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the love of godly things, that we may delight in God's word and walk in his ways. And for the spirit, that we may be led into all truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, we pray you to strengthen our faith and to make our hearts bold, that we may not fear, but address our prayers to you in all humility. Hear us on behalf of Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, who even now stands before you on our behalf, pleading our cause with his own blood, until that day when we are delivered from the changes and chances of this mortal life, and stand before you in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen.
find peace, serve the Lord in all you do. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you.